Hello my good YouTubers, thanks for uh, being patient with me and uh, yeah I haven't been around for a while, been busy doing all sorts of different things, one has to pay the bills and uh, unfortunately YouTube doesn't um, doesn't pay enough to pay the, uh, the bills so one has to work. But nevertheless, I'm making a quick YouTube video today in regard to a lot of the disputes on the system D uh, factor or you know video that I'd previously done about system D um, obviously there's a tremendously large amount of controversy regarding it and how you know um, everybody's gonna have to adopt system D and this that and the other well there's the primary reason why the uh, system D effectively, in a way, violates the design principles of the Unix-like operating system or GNU system. You have the freedom to choose what you want to run on your computer. That's what a personal computer is, personal computing, meaning you personally control every aspect of the computing that is on your computer. If there is something, whether it be software or hardware, that stops you from uh, controlling every aspect of your computing or what you want to do, then it ceases to be a personal computer. Effectively, it's just a computer. You, 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 know, you, you can't have a personal computer and then take away your personal right to do what you want to do with it. And this is the fundamental factor of the design principles of the GNU Unix-like operating system. It is that you have a personal computer and are able to run and manipulate and do anything you want to do on that computer so you have no binary blob that stops you from doing it. And this is a fundamental problem with System D. System D, once compiled, requires you to then go back, re modify the source code and recompile the source code, and then have to restart the system to actually use the code you've now changed rather than with an open RC in its system, you can change and manipulate anything that's going on while the system's running and not require the system to be rebooted. That's a fundamental uh, change in, 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 in the, the sort of design principle between the open RC in its system and the system D in its system. There isn't really much else to argue about in regards to that, the system D system effectively can be compiled, and if compiled particularly by somebody else, uh, a different distribution, uh, you know, uh, persons, then they could decide to stick all sorts of different weird and wonderful tracking mechanisms inside it, this, that, and the rest of it, and they've compiled it, they've built the binary. Uh, and and imported it because it's on the limited GPL license they could do that they could implement binary factors binary firmware blobs and all sorts of different things inside that that if you tried to remove would break the system D compilation process and you wouldn't be able to build it now yes okay if you're a, a, a an experienced developer an experienced programmer there would be absolutely no problem with that. You'd be able to fix it, remove it, and hence fork the project from a system D project to the system open G. If uh, it's open D, sorry, if we say open G, I don't know where I came with open G. Mind you, that's an interesting, interesting, uh, different name, but nevertheless. So you could fork it and, and, and have those things removed. But the, the, the reality is um when it's being compiled by a distribution then you don't know what's been placed into that system d it, it's and it's not something that you can stop and remove from system d once it's compiled 
The beauty of the open RC is that if there's something in there, you can remove it. You don't have to recompile the open RC. You don't have to dever into the code. You can actually physically remove that, and the rest of the system works perfectly fine without it. This is the fundamental flaw that is designed into the system D, and it's a, a, a programming model that is very similar to the way that Microsoft products and a lot of the proprietary software systems use in that, yes, if you want to use these lovely, super fast features, which are incredibly good and incredibly feature rich, that provide you with the uh, benefits and, and this, that and the other of this, this, this great shiny uh, diamond coated you know bells and whistles all ringing type of system then uh, you're gonna have to accept this bit that we spy on you or we do this or we can do that we can do the other kind of ideology now that's not in system D at the moment but it enables that it enables what they call uh, future creep to allow things to creep in and if everybody becomes uh, how can we put it dependent on the system the environment then this stuff could creep in there and without it it won't run so you can't just remove it and the rest of the system continue to run this is the fundamental aspect it is a design principle it's 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 an ethos it's a a a, a, a principle that um you know you should have the ability to be able to if you don't want it remove it um and not have to break the system by removing it and that's the fundamental factor which is one of the reasons why the gen 2 linux system has offered the opportunity for users to either build and support the OpenRC system, which does respect the effectively the ethos of the GNU uh, Unix-like operating system, or you can choose to use System D. Again, the freedom choice is yours, depending on which you choose. Unfortunately, there is oper operating systems out there, or distributors, should we say, of the GNU operating system, that have chosen not to allow their users or their user base to actually remove the system D and implicate something like the open RC. Um, and now this is where it becomes a problem because effectively you're once again breaking the design principles of the GNU operating system. It's just wrong.